Howdy, everyone. The tea is served. Very hot. But, very good, even if I say so myself. <clears throat> For some reason, I can't see my uh, chat window. What's going on here? Very strange. I see Discord okay, obviously. I can't see the... Um, Can I see the uh, Twitch tweet, tweets, Twitch, Twitch messages? Should I say? What's going on here? Maybe I've done something wrong. It's entirely possible. Tools. That's wrong. Not quite sure what's going on here. Give it a chat. Let me see if I can open it again. Yay, we're back. Right, I've rearranged my windows a little today. So it struck me as somewhat um, badly organised yesterday. But for those of you who don't know, I know Laurie knows because he was here yesterday. This is the uh, take two for the uh, audio video, analog audio video stream. Um, I'll do a quick update and then we'll move on to dealing with the um, audio video um, tile or the analog audio video tile. <clears throat> um, we did try last night, but I had lots of problems. But I also uh, was a bit sloppy on um, the stream production as well. I'm going to try and make that a bit better this time. I'm just going to put the lava mics on because that makes things a little clearer. I know my laptop's very noisy. I will move to a desktop at some point. <clears throat> and excuse the coughing. I've still got a cough. It's the, uh, hopefully the final part of this cold. It's been driving me insane for the last couple of weeks. Oh, that tea's good. Um, so update on the uh, Ice Logic deck first. The intention is to do several builds, uh, and we're probably going to go for the um, uh, the gold unique finish for at least one of the builds, maybe two or three of the builds, because I want to build it up. Start with a smaller number, maybe less than twenty, twenty or less. And then a larger amount, and then a larger amount. We'll see how we get on. Um, but certainly the first ones are going to be uh, Enig. Maybe the first uh, first batch will. Um, I mean, the first batch will definitely be Enig. I've already decided that. I've done most of the changes for it now. Um, what I'm trying to change at the moment is some. Um, some of the tiles get those sorted out. Um, 
Uh, we've also got a new interesting uh, display of tile idea. I don't know if that would be really in time. If it is, it'd be cool. It's not that complicated, but it's quite nice. But I want to review that tomorrow. Um, that's a tomorrow job. So, um, the end of January, I want to be able to ship to the first um, developing supporters because don't forget that not everything will be operational at that point. There'll still be quite a lot to work. I mean, you will be able to program the FPGA, you'll be able to write some basic code, you know, do that. There'll be some library support for the base tiles that we're shipping in the configuration. Um, so uh, let me know if you're interested in that. What I'll probably do is some sort of wait list. I haven't worked out exactly if I'm going to do that on Tindy or somewhere else. Um, just wait and see on that. So that's the update on that. Um, my component basket to finish that build is pretty much done. Just got to double check it. And I've got a few um, you know, design rule checks and stuff to run on the, the board version. The updated version and I'm going to order them but moving swiftly on if there's any questions do fire away at those um, so one of the new things so I'm going to talk about the VGA tile today that's um, uh, let me show you here let me see if I can see if I can try not to break it on route You can see the um, we've got two tiles on there: the LED tile and the VGA tile. This is the puppy that we're going to be doing the um, driver for today in the test example. And uh, let me get to this is a bit fragile. Right? Wow! I managed to get that in my tea. Be clever. There we go. Uh, luckily, it was the insulated cable. So we're going to be working on the VGA, sorry, the audio video tile today, and it's the analog audio video. It has analog video and it has analog uh, audio. Audio, analog audio is obvious. The analog video is VGA does. As to differentiate differentiate it from say a digital AV tile to be a DAV so let's start off now one of the things I've started doing and I made a really poor talk about this stuff about this yesterday in the stream that was not particularly good um, is I want to create kind of lab notes as we go along so documentation as we go along with these streams uh, that makes it easier uh, for people to access what we've done and work with them after we've done a stream or even looking back you know they can they can they can look at the documentation uh, for these things they can also access the stream if they need to um, I'm using a thing called MD book which is written in rust and it's used for um, rust documentation among other things it's really just uh, a way for creating a kind of ebook really uh, that's based on markdown it's very simple and that's why I like it so uh, you can actually see that in the window below, uh, below me, should be down here, there. I know it's a bit small, but we're more concerned with what's going on on this side, which is where the uh, IDE is for the work that we're doing. So at the moment, that page that we're seeing down here below is the uh, page for the audio visual example which is what we're concerned with today so let's just sort that out so at the moment I put two images in here um, what these images represent <coughs> is the um, VGA signal so um, I'm wondering actually should I do me, I'm just gonna break this down a little bit let's break this into two parts so I go back to the summary this is where the content is um, 
is created or uh, enumerated and it's just like an outline so what I'm going to do is do this here oops and I'm going to do this and do the, uh, the um, so let me just do this and go to open new uh, notes page and I'm going to call this video uh, MD markdown go to that that's the new subsection here so this is the page we're going to be working on so the first thing we're going to look at is the signal so how, how is a VGA frame uh, defined I don't know if I can open this oh no I've got the smaller one right okay sorry that's so teeny tiny but here you see the center blue area is really where the video uh, itself is that's what you see and then the areas around it are things such as hor horizontal and vertical sync, as well as uh, what's called front and back porches. Um, these are normally invisible as far as what you see on the screen are, but they're part of the signal. And then below here, um, I've shown an example of the signal. Um, here you can see, um, in this case, they're using sync on green, which is a bit confusing. Um, anyhow, they break the signal up here into the various parts. So you've got the active video signal first in this part, then you've got the front pulse, then you've got the sync pulses, and then the back pulse. So this is the you know the normal um, normal way that the signal is represented. This is important because what you're going to see is when we look at the um, the way that the VGA is controlled you have to add all of these components together um, let's look so where we're we taking this from uh, I should actually provide a link for this so this is the code that we started off from. So let's just add this in actually. Um, Uh, do a copy and paste so we've got a link to that in the document in case you want to refer to where we are starting this from and we can go back to the uh, to the book in the lab notes so let's have a look at that um, what I want to do is import the code that I've got. Uh, this may fill the uh, page somewhat. Let's see what happens.
So it's the AHDL, the Amarind, sorry, Amaranth, uh, formerly in MyGen. Uh, the original source you look at is in MyGen based. <clears throat> um, and I've already got this because I worked on it last night because it is quite complicated and I've tried to simplify it a little bit. There are parts to it. Um, first of all, we need, um, let's look at the overview and then we'll dig down a bit, a bit deeper. So uh, let me include uh, the code here that I've written and then we can go into that and go through that. So So I'm going to pull in some code here, and it's called Audio Video. Audio and Video. So now if we look um, at what we've got in the page, um, we can see what I've written here and I'll go through that in a sec. Um, this is the top level um, AHDL that we're writing for the audio video example. So let's just switch to that and show it in here because it's a bit bigger. Can you read that okay? Is that uh, okay size wise, Larry? By the way, and I'm assuming my audio is okay tonight, apart from the horrible fan noise, of course. Um, that code of mine came from Juice Tech and was the original. Okay. Um, really annoying let's put a link back into that because I need to make sure people are you know correctly um, attributed um, did you say it was? Good tech. And um, Laurie says the size is Yes, isn't it? Oh, this uh, cable to pay me out, so I need long ones.
That looks a bit better. Right, okay, I've got that documented now, which is good. I've been playing around with this quite a bit as well this afternoon, so I wanted to try and get this running smoothly because it's a complicated bit of code really for simple string this early on in tiles. Right, so just going back then to that code so let's have a look through this code so what we're doing here is uh, we've got tile number one so we, we're, we're defining the position so that's where the um, audio video tile is residing in tile position one um, we've got some other files which we'll look deeper in uh, in the tiles directory um, to deal with the VGA uh, its timing test patterns etc uh, we're also going to need a PLL, and I'll mention that in a minute. We need to put a link in for that. I'm probably not going to go deep into the PLL stuff, um, simply because that's probably worth a different stream in itself. But I will, um, I will need to put a link in for that at some point. Um, whilst I remember, let's just add. Um, background introduction tiles might need to be a another section here at the end called uh, reference perhaps. I can include a section on PLL. It's definitely worth covering some of that. I don't know if we'll have time to do that today, but we should definitely um, include that. No. Anyhow, back to where we were. A V no, I don't need that I keep all on lockdown. Separate. So back to this code. Um, so I'm creating a class here called AV example which is an elaborate class which is what it needs to be in uh, Amaranth um, and when I actually create an instance of this what I pass in is the VGA timing um, VGA has a number of different modes which is different resolutions different refresh rates etc um, so we can pass that in. We have also from um, Guztech's um, VGA stuff a file that contains these, which I've put into the VGA support file, which we'll look at in a bit. Anyhow, so we can pass in a timing mode effectively. 
uh, which we can store locally in the AV example. We've got some adjustments here to be able to manipulate position of the uh, frame, etc. I'm not playing with those at the moment, I haven't found that I need to. Um, then we've got our normal elaborate uh, method, which is the thing that will build the synthesis uh, when called upon in Amaranth builds. Um, first thing we do is get a module, obviously. What we do is we grab the default clock, which in this case, I mean, it should be 25 megahertz. That's what it's going to be when the firmware is uh, a bit more, um, a bit more complete. Uh, at the moment, this is running at 16 megahertz, which does make it a bit dodgy, but it will do for our purposes. Um, then we're going to add a sub module here called PLL. Um, as I said, I'm not going to go into detail here. Uh, PLL stands for phase lock loop. It's a way of deriving a new um, oscillator, if you like, or oscillation at a frequency that's different from the provided source. Um, so what this can do is take a clock input at one frequency and produce a clock input output at another frequency and there's a number of parameters that enable it to do that. As I say, I will need to do a reference document on PLL at some point. But for the moment, um, we've got a piece of code that does that, that I'm uh, importing in and we are passing into it the frequency in megahertz of our input signal, the desired frequency of the pixel clock, which is what we want out, i.e. the rate at which the pixels are clocked out, um, and then a domain name. Um, because basically what we're doing is we're creating a new, entirely new clock domain here for the uh, VGA to operate in. Um, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that new uh, domain, uh, clock domain, into our, our module. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new VGA. Um, so in order to create a new VGA submodule, and we use the VGA class, we pass in the timing for this class, i.e. the controls mode, and a few extra parameters here. Again, I'm not going to play around too much with those. Those work right now, as far as I'm aware. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do, as well as creating a VGA driver, if you like, that's the hardware that's going to convert our RGB signals into you know, those time signals to create that uh, section frame that we saw in the diagram. Um, we're going to use what's called a test pattern generator. So this is another bit of uh, AHDL uh, here, and I'm using a class called VGA Test Pattern. Um, originally in the code that Laurie had, this was integrated into VGA class. I've extracted that so it can we can add that on separately and be able to change it separately from the VGA class. Um, it also shows us how we can provide an input to the VGA class. When it's in the VGA class, it makes the VGA class look more complicated. It also doesn't show us the benefits of being able to drive the VGA class from an external set of RGB pixels, which is what we're doing here. Although it's a slight cheap one because it uses the internal timing signals. Um, although it's only using the, the exposed parts of those timing signals in order to generate the pattern. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, um, engage some combinational logic um, and here all we're doing is we're going to enable the VGA clock. Uh, that is basically we're just turning it on, we're mucking the clock in. Um, we're then going to grab the resource um, from the platform. So this is something that's actually added in down here. Um, this is an abstraction, a pinout or connector abstraction in the form of a resource. So we can call upon it 
and this will take care of the fact of whether we're using tile one, two, three, or four. So when we pass this in, we just pass the tile number, and it does all the pin connections for us and passes it into the VGA driver. So we're going to call that because we need to be able to hook up the signals um, for the output to drive the monitor. So in this case, um, in our combinational area here, our logic combinational area, we're going to start connecting up you know our tile red signal with the VGA output red signal and green, green, blue with blue, etc. Horizontal sync with H sync, vertical sync with V sync. Uh, we've also got some audio stuff here. At the moment, I'm just putting the input clock to the PLL and the output clock on the audio connectors. You wouldn't normally do that. The only reason I've done that is because we were diagnosing some issues yesterday. So I'm just going to keep that as it is until we do a kind of um, an audio part of that. Um, the other thing that you'll notice here is we're slicing the uh, VGA um, because our output here on this tile we only have three bits for red, three bits for green and two bits for blue uh, whereas the VGA uh, driver that we're dealing with here is capable of doing up to eight bits. So what we're doing is slicing just the bits that we need in other words, we're taking the upper three bits, upper three bits, and then the upper two bits of the eight bit, eight bit um, um, DAC output, effectively. And then we return the module. That's it. And then all this stuff does at the bottom is that just basically uh, when we call the script, which we're going to do in a minute, um, it will um, actually synthesize the uh, AHTL and create a, uh, an FPGA binary which it will upload to the um, the ICE the ICE logic deck which is running some Rust based firmware which will listen for that signature and it will then reprogram the FPGA with the FPGA image and hopefully we should see some stuff coming in so let's just dig down further into this code. So that's, the, that's just the overview of the VGA uh, at a high level. But what that's doing is that's calling in um, a whole bunch of stuff up here. So let's have a look first at the VGA timings. So if we go into the VGA uh, library file, sorry, it's a bit small. I should scroll in a bit more here. This has been refactored significantly from yesterday, just as just for anyone that was watching yesterday's stream. So it's a bit more organized, so you may notice some differences. So the, the base VGA timing, um, you know, structure, if you like, in this case, it's uh, because we're in Python, we're using a, a, a name tuple. Uh, we're extending the, the name tuple class. Um, remember those different portions and sections of the frame that I mentioned earlier. The, this is where these are enumerated. So for any given mode, um, there is a certain number of clock cycles that each of these parts of the signal exists for. Uh, these are all specified as integers. Okay. And we need all of those in order to operate the mode. And then if we scroll right down towards the end, go past all the code for this clever stuff, because we're going to look at that in a minute, you'll see that there's actually a list of VGA timings here. Um, actually, it's dictionary, forgive me. Um, and here you will see some standard modes. Uh, the one that we're going to use for this test, if we scroll down, is a 102.768. Oh, did I go fast? It's this one, I guess. That's the mode we're using. These numbers here are the number of clocks, pixel clocks. The integer number of pixel clocks. Um, not that, because that's obviously the frequency of the pixel clock that we're generating. Uh, vertical refresh rate, obviously. Number of pixels for the frame, the the viewable um, that's horizontal and that's vertical uh, <clears throat> then the size of those invisible bits okay that you can't see 
how long they exist for. So what happens is then, let's have a look then what we do. So when we generate a VGA driver class, as we're doing here, um, in fact, given the names that we're using for the others, hold on. VGA timing, VGA test pattern, this really should be called VGA driver. Let me just refactor this, hold on. Why not? Go break everything. Oh, that's very small dialogue, hold on. Okay. Just going to change that one. And then do... That, that's good. Let me change the... Um, Timings, hold on. Now I think I'm okay. Just a bit worried it might be changing something it didn't want to. Uh, so that. Right. <clears throat> so the VGA driver, as I say, it takes the VGA timing mode that we're passing in. Um, it also has a bunch of signals that we may need to connect to. Uh, there's the clock enable signal I mentioned earlier. That, that enables the pixel clock to happen. We also have some input signals, which is we have an 8-bit uh, um, red, green and blue. So if we wanted to connect a pixel source to this VGA driver, those are the signals that we'd be driving. So we'd have to present values for the red, green, and blue at every pixel clock. Uh, in order to do that, we need some timing information. So things like uh, fetch next will tell it to get the next pixel timing. It's not the only way of doing it. You could look at uh, things like the blank, blank signal. Um, but if you're doing a frame buffer for the pixels, then you probably need to do that. The naught beam X and naught beam Y are really the the position we are on the screen. It's a way to think about it. What what position point? Think of them as X and Y coordinates on the screen. So we know which pixel we're drawing. Um, we've got some extra information about um, the status, where we are in things like the blank signals. Um, We've also got here, this is what comes out of the VGA driver. These are the output levels that we're then, that we're then connecting. Can you remember to the, um, to the tile here? That's these signals. So those are the, uh, the output signals that need to be, to go through the digital to analog conversion. And then we also have output signals for the, you know, the vertical sync and the horizontal sync, which is a one-bit signal. Um, internally, we have a timing constraint, uh, timing setting, and then we have the number of bits. Uh, this is kind of like the under resolution, the bits where it's represented. Again, we're not changing those at the moment. Um, down to the change this. I hope I don't like this spacing like that. It's done here. Can't resist. So you'd be saying, "Curse you! Curse you for all of you for doing that." I'm going to do it anyhow. It's the way I like it. Right. Um, so when we get to the that that, that that's how we initialize it and connect things up. The elaborate elaborate method is what is called upon for the synthesis of this particular 
driver or VGA output. Um, so what happens here is we set some very specific parts in that waveform section um, because these are important because we need to deal change things behaviorally in the uh, hardware description at these points in time and if you look these are incremental so forget that these are really wacky ways of doing constants that's just amaranth doing that this is the you know what type of constant this is um, the value is here so what this is saying is this is self timing dot x minus one so timing dot x that's that's basically how many uh, in the x-axis minus one and then the next one where the h-sync is on we have we've added in the front porch and then the next one we add in the uh, um, h-sync pulse and then the next one we add in the um, timing back porch so it's just getting longer and longer so you can think of these as events during the scan of the horizontal line just a single line going across these events are going to occur at those different points in time this is the count if you like of the number of pixels over the entire signal not pixels uh, pixel clocks over the entire time and then we have the same kind of set of markers for the vertical progression um, because we're going to use these in our behavioral modeling um, in our behavioral modeling uh, we've also got some internal signals here that um, are used to calculate different things. Uh, so if we look at this first one, so if we look at the signal itself, uh, what we're saying here under this section is uh, basically, oh, let me just change that. Um, so this is happening when well, if self clock. So if the clock is only if the clock is enabled will this happen. Otherwise everything will be set to zero. So this is going through and it's checking the current counter exposition with the current C frame. Remember this was the horizontal, uh, one of the horizontal markers. Um, and then it's setting. Um, in fact, it's actually resetting at that point. So when it gets to the end, it's resetting. And we see something similar on the vertical signal. And where is that? Yeah. And again, when we're at the end of the vertical frame, we reset that as well. Otherwise, what we do is we either increment X or increment Y. Okay, so these are just counters. So we're, we're, we're tracking, we're incrementing the pixel position, if you like, according to the pixel clock. Um, we're, we're setting up here some combinational logic so that we can track some of these features externally using those signals I pointed out before. You know the OB max, OB y. So current X position, current Y position, and the signal. You know when we need to fetch the new pixel. Um, then the other thing that we need to do is generate those kind of um, uh, blank sync signals and blank signals. So we, what we're doing here is when we're hitting these blank markers for the horizontal, we're actually setting various different. Uh, um, blanking signals and then here we're dealing with the R sync so it's resetting or moving that number of points forward the pixels forward and then here, oh, what are we doing here? Season. Oh, we're back to doing the vertical stuff here. So there's two sections to it. One is just doing the frame sections and the general pixel counting, and the other is dealing with the synchronization and those kind of invisible parts. 
And then finally, what we're doing here is we are connecting what's coming in, the VGA signal that's coming in from the pixel generator, uh, connecting that with the output um, in this combinational logic. The red, green, and blue signals. We're also taking those internal signals, the R sync and V sync values, and we're outputting those to the H sync and V sync outputs, which in turn then get passed to the tiles, V sync and H sync pins. Um, and there's also this other one that's accessible if we need it, which is the display um, marker or signal. And that is basically it. It's slightly complicated. I'm not going to go into real, real details. I mean, you need to draw this out and work this out yourself and look at the waveform signals. You do need some familiarity with the VGA signal in order to understand exactly what's going on. But that is really the core of the driver. Now, the next part of this is how do we generate a signal into that driver that creates a nice little test pattern that we, you know, gives us something to actually see. So um, here is the VGA test pattern part. So we, when we initialize this, we pass in the VGA driver. Um, in fact, maybe I should re this. Yeah, it's fine. Um, this then produces a bunch of fundamental um, parts of the signal which are then combined and I'm not going to go into detail here because this is actually fairly cryptic the way that this works but it will ge generate a nice light like, test pattern of different shades of each color if you like or different amounts of each color over the entire screen in different sections it's actually very clever um, so all we're doing here is with that information is we are either if we're in the blanking period we we, we basically want it black so we, the output we're driving to zero if we're not in the blanking period um, you know we're not getting this the output VGA blank signal then what it means is we're drawing something so then what we're doing is we're using those fundamental elements that uh, have been um, built in combinational logic here and we're outputting them and combining them in different ways to create a, an entire screen and that is the VGA signal um, so what we're going to do now is plug the bugger in and hopefully this will work one of the issues that we had last night actually is we were running code which was much more like the original lorry code um, it's been somewhat refactored since then um, but we couldn't get it to work um, and it turns out that there was a dodgy resistor on the uh, ice logic deck I'd obviously not uh, reflowed this resistor very well because it had somehow become disconnected so the resistor in question here was on, on the um, the ice 40 HX uh, 4 and 8k chips for that matter there are two um, phase lock loops 0 and 1 they're called and when we're using the PLL, PLLs here it was using the PLL1 or PLL1 on on my my pinouts of the logic so um, I spent a lot of time wondering why I was getting no signals when I was using the oscilloscope to look at the outputs um, to the VGA as I mentioned before what we did was um, we actually sent the clocks, the you know the main clock that goes into the FPGA. I took that out to one of the to the left channel of the audio connector, and then sorry the the right channel of the audio connector, and then the PLL output to the um, left channel of the audio connector. I could then go and you know probe that uh, with the oscilloscope probe and have a look, and I was seeing nothing on the PLL output but I was seeing something on the clock so immediately I knew there was an issue to do with the PLLs and it didn't take long but uh, I soon found out that you know uh, basically that the PLL1 which was the one that's being used here 
um, was not getting power. So when I was measuring the voltage on the PLL1 input supply voltage, because they've got separate ones for each PLL, and it has to be heavily filtered, uh, part, part of that filter is uh, the input resistor. And because this wasn't connected properly, it wasn't delivering the power. So the power, the voltage of this was way down low, much lower than it should have been. Um, so it was obvious it was a problem. So on, you know, inspection under the microscope, I could see that that resistor was not connected as it should be. Um, so that was why it wasn't working. So um, I had a good idea by the end of play yesterday after the stream, looking at that knowing what the problem was and then this morning um, I got my um, heat pencil out and um, managed to reflow uh, a new resistor on there and um, fix that and now when I power it up I see that the PLL is getting the right sort of voltage level so it should all Uncle Dory work so what we're going to do now drum roll if you please is we are going to test it. Let me just do a drink swap here. Must keep the liquid going. How are we going for time? 8.22, much better than yesterday. Bear with me. Darts, can I call you back? Yeah, I'm in the middle of a stream. Uh, right. Right. And you, you turn it on, your heating. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there is for it. We'll have a look. I'll have a look when I'm over at the weekend. I'll see if there's anything I can do. Wow, that's late. Okay. Right, listen, I've got to get on with the stream, Street. Yeah, wrap up. All right. Bye. Bye. Offspring, they always call you at the inconvenient times, don't they? She might have a heating problem. This is what I'm going to be doing this weekend. So, uh, what I want to do is plug these in. I wonder if I can switch to the boom mic. That would be good. Okay. Yeah. First thing I'm going to do is just run the... Um, Make sure that we're talking to it. Let's see if I can run the uh, LEDs. Yeah. Running the LEDs. The LEDs are running. Now I'm going to plug in the uh, VGA cable. Now. My VGA monitor is, uh, sure I'm pointing just behind my head, so it's going to be small and far away I'm afraid, but we should see something come up on it. So um, the LED tile is working, let me run the um, audio video. Builds first. Looking good. Come on, come on. Yay! Can you see? There we go. There's our test signal. I'm sorry that it's so far away. Uh, I don't know if there's any easier way of getting to that. Um, Um, hmm. 
Yeah, it looks a bit better from here. For you guys, it may be very small. Can you see anything on there? Laurie, can you see anything? I, I know it's going to be small, but you should be able to see something on that. Which is good. So if you have the fucking tile at last. I only took two streams. Yeah, now I can see it just. Right. Um, good. We like that. So um, the other thing I wanted to do on the markdown, if you have any questions, fire them away. I just update this markdown because what I didn't add here was the next little code. So on here now, so we've got the VHD top level uh, HTML, uh, but it's not showing the bottom one. ABC tile and ABC tile. Why is it not picking that up? And ABC underscore tile. That's very strange. So it's doing the first one, but not the second one. Driver. Uh, um, uh, and, hmm. um, actually. Timings. <coughs> Why is it showing that? I'm a bit confused why it's not showing that one. AABC, that's the right name, isn't it? AABC underscore tile dot PY. Oh, it's under tiles, that's fine. Right. Right. Subdirectory tiles. Tiles, tiles. There we go. Oh, that's the AV time. No, no, I don't want the AV time. I want the PGA. Damn it. That actually goes in. There. And then this 
should be is low. Oh. A flu without a space. That's in tiles as well. That should have now. In fact, that might want to go in a separate directory, but let's deal with that later. DJ, uh, DJ, driver and timings. Yay! So we've got some basic documentation for that there. Most of the code, but something, some wording could be added. Cool. Any questions on this particular matter? Oh, I made a mistake in my, uh, I've just noticed in my um, driver here. So if you look VGA, um, all, all of these are you know, derived from elaborable. And I forgot to do that foolishly. Very foolishly. We did work. The test pattern should derive from that as well. Now when I run it, it shouldn't complain, hold on. Ta da we're back, we're back, it's there. Right, that's that one. So, um, no questions on the matter, that's good. I mean, Laurie, you're probably already familiar with this code anyway, so HDL synthesis, whatever you want to call it. So all I've done is I've, um, compared to yours, Laurie, what I've done is I've um, create, I've separated out the um, uh, test pattern generator from the VGA part. And the VGA part now becomes the VGA driver, so that's all it's really concerned with. Just to kind of simplify it a little bit, haven't much changed now. Anything else? It does make it slightly shorter, but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Just makes it less complex when you're reading it, which is good. Uh, and then I bung the VGA timings into the um, into the same file. So all now six in one VGA file, which is kind of cool in it. So that's where we are with that part of the tile. And as I say, it's now breaking which is good. Oh, believe you me, oh, Laurie's saying I hadn't looked at that VGA code, it just worked for me. Well, believe you me, I went through it with a small fine-tooth comb because I had issues. Uh, but a lot of that was just chasing down that PLL issue. Um, but I've been working on some other bits and pieces of it today as well, to trying to understand what it's doing, for example. Um, it's slightly convoluted, but actually it's quite good. There's some uh, interesting support there. In particular, you can see how to drive it, which is what we're doing with, um, with this VDA test pattern. I know this isn't a frame buffer, this is a dynamic generator, depending on the position of the frame, because it repeats every frame. Um, but it gives you some ideas of how to um, connect stuff up. Which is kind of cool. So that's where we are with that. We should go back to the audio video stuff. So where AVMD? So what have we got on the AVMD? Audio video. This is all we've got so far. Um, one of the things that we're going to need to do is do some sort of audio. Then. So. Um, 
on the on the summary what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add an, an audio section yeah. does that need to be there Um, this will be all time D. So um I don't know if this is even going to work, it's going to be interesting. It'd be nice to have a picture of the um, actual tile at some point as well. I need to take some pickies. Let's just go to here. Um, and some audio code. Right. Um, audio code do I need to explain what audio is here <clears throat> I mean basically it's a continuously changing waveform in an analog format well that's what we're dealing with here <coughs> my throat's getting dry Why don't we just generate? Can we just generate a signal? Let's just generate a square wave to start with. That's probably the easiest thing to do. I know, Laurie, you sent me some stuff earlier, but that's more streaming, and we can't do that until we have streaming input and output between the STM32 and the FPGA. We haven't finished that. We need to get the QSPY working for that or, or the UL or whatever. So um, let's just generate some audio first. Uh, the easiest way is to create just like a simple square wave, I guess. So let's, let, let's just do a square wave. So let's create an audio generator. 
Let's create a file. ABCC tile py. So if we look at the ACC tiles, um, I've not linked the VGA into that yet. Do. Let's just do a audio .py. generator. .py. Let's just do an audio first. And what are we going to do? We're going to do, we're going to need to have a, um, we're going to need let's try that. Start with that. Let me just change the size so we can see what we've got here. Let's do a class called generate. I want to make that. Elaborable. Elaborable. So it's a mouthful. Am I? I'm happy to spell class, isn't it? Um. So we're going to do to do in it. Oh no. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we're going to want south. If we're going to have a signal, south dot left, I guess. Ah, no. That's not what I did. South dot left. And so that oops, right. And then we need to do that. Elaborate. Um. Return. All the regular stuff. So, what do we need to do to generate this? So, if I want to generate this, I need a clock, like a timer or something, um, or a divider. Where did we do something like this? We did this with tile test, didn't we? So, yeah, we just created a timer like this. Something similar to this. Can we do this? I'd be interested just to see if I can get a sound out of it, maybe. Um, 
the monitor's got a sound input, so. Um, we've got that. We've got a timer, which we're going to use to divide down the clock. Um, and do some time here. So we've got incremental times. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie our left signal. to some bits of this timer. I'm saying minus 15 to minus 1, that's confused me. So we're going to divide basically the system's clock down by however much so if we were to run this python 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 we will call it audio it's actually tires no, 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 no. I'm saying I need to hook it into audio video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sub module. Oh, why doesn't it like that? Unresolved reference left. God. So, this is audio to know what it is. Oh, yeah. Square. Generate. So, let's add another sub module on here. Let's 
I'm going to attach that to SQW dot left and then SQW dot right. So I'm connecting the audio outputs to the um, the tile. That shouldn't really call for the tile. It should be called OV tile. Just change this. Uh, I have no idea if this is going to work. So this should generate the video output signal and also some audio. Right, let's just see if it actually um, ends up with errors first. Which it has. What have we done? It's clocking self request. Audio video. 25 has already been requested. Ooh, what the hell is this? Can't duplicate anything on the clock thing, can I? the size of that. Um, what am I doing? Have I, have I got my um, clock domains mixed up here?
top bit you mean make it 16 bit <clears throat> to get in the audio range um, what am I doing wrong here can you see the error I'm getting here it's complaining about clock signal already being requested it's because I've not expressed this in square wave specifically I know I request it up at the audio video level because we do it here clock in do I need to set the domain and up to my pixel Am I doing something wrong with the clock domains, do you think, Noi? Why is it doing this weird thing? Have you created a sync domain? Uh, what, for audio? No. Well, on the audio video we do... Um, hold on. First of all. We do domains pixel PLL domain. And the combination dot PLL. And we add this clock constraint here. This is the top level, the audio video. Sorry, the comments are delayed. You probably um, haven't seen it. So, yes, yeah, so what I'm doing here, clock domain, domain sort of pixel, is because we've already got a clock domain for that. And then we're using the PLL. Is it this? Oh, I took that out so I didn't think I need that clearly I do you've got that you've got that four sub modules PLL yeah Yeah, prefers that. My fault, my bad, I took it out. That's probably running now. Uh, I wonder if we can hear anything. Hold on. Ah. Uh, you know what there is a problem with, though? The audio connector is too damn close to the VGA connector. Um, and as a result, I can't push it fully in. Luckily, it's on the channel where it just makes contact. <clears throat> but that's working. Um, just to show that it's working, I mean, you can obviously hear it. What I could do is just change the frequency. Yeah, and then run it again. This should be half the frequency, right? Or twice the frequency, rather.
Yes, it's an octave up. <clears throat> oh dear. Well, it's good that we did this test because I now know that physically the, those connectors are too close together, which is going to be a problem because I'm very limited in terms of room. I don't think I've got any room to play with. So I'm going to have to solve that problem. It's taken up another octave just to really annoy everyone. It was a good guess on the bit divide. Marvellous. Got a Morse tapper. I'll leave that unplugged for a moment because it is a tad annoying. Um, let me just make sure it works on the um, on the right as well. Let's do two. We do a we could do a chord. That'd be really sophisticated, wouldn't it? Just do two harmonics to start with. I'm not sure if we'll be able to hear both because I can't actually get the connector in. I might be able to um, kind of fake it. So, I can show you the two. I don't know if I can get them both at once. Yay! But I can't get it in, I'm just, just, just touching the contacts on the jack. What a lovely sound we make. This is how I used to drive my folks completely insane with my early electronic kits. There's one thing that you could do easily on early electronics is make lots of really, really annoying sounds to wind your parents up. And I did a very good job of that. There we go. So, well, we know that the audio is working anyhow. And that's probably the simplest example um, that I can bang out at this point. Um, can we do anything a bit more sophisticated than that? Hold on. What is, um, what's in the Asylum uh, Monks? This is quite a good book if you're getting started. It doesn't cover our hardware, unfortunately. I've written before a lot of it. What does he do in here on the audio side? Generation Audio Super Tone Generation One kilohertz tone Generate a purpose tone frequency generator. Ooh.
Yeah, he just does them at different frequencies, I think. And then he goes on to playing the audio files, but we can't easily do that until we get the um, uh, serial in and out. Talks about a wave player. It's interesting. Shame he doesn't do any audio uh, composition, you know, composition of different waveforms to make other waveforms. I always enjoyed that at college. And it come to understand, it came to understanding, um, you know, what a signal is made up of. Maybe I can do that at some point. <laughs> Okay, well, it's good. At least we know the audio is working. It also means we've got a problem. Hardware problem. Do I have a hardware to-do list on here? No, but I'll tell you what I do have. It's a to-do on here. Ask Black Crab. Yeah, I need to put it in the ice budget. I need a to-do. Where's my to-do? To-do, 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 to-do. HDL to do, no. To do. I know what I'll do. I'm going to put it on the um, CAD itself for the moment. Put a note in the um, in the CAD for me. Um, audio. Um, check to close to review. Right, save. So I made a note of that. <coughs> oh, look, Laurie's dog got some more interesting sounds. Siren. Let's have a look at Siren. Be quite annoying. Excuse my cough. It's going to north, going to the centre, from three. Between two towns. Uh, 
Oh yes. Let me see. Yeah, they do all sorts here. I might take a look at that. Oh, they do fast sweep, slow sweep, miles of. Yeah, I'll keep keep hold of that. It might be useful. It might be more interesting. I'll play around with it. So that first one just switches between two. Uh, Laurie says his M. Nigen examples are taken from that. Let's have a look. Notes. My answer. Interesting. I wonder how I'm going to solve my bloody jack problem now. I'm not sure I've got the room on the, um, on the connector. That's a bit of a pig, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to take a look at some of your stuff. There, um, I'm going to already quote that. Because I know I'm going to use some of this. So under the audio, I'm going to make a note. So I've already referenced these. Uh, code 40 from in turn inspired by there we go. Let's just put that reference into the code here, into the documentation. 
Oops. Let's that yeah cool go oh, high I post by the way we've been doing the uh, uh, analog AV tile this evening it's our second take after a bit of a crap shoot yesterday So we did the VGA stuff, um, you can see that from the, there on that screen, that's coming out from the uh, Isologic deck. And then we were just trying to generate something to test the audio channel. Uh, yeah, but I, I will throw up the recorded version of this I post, no props, so you'll be able to review it later. But he just finished work or something. I'm just going to remove my mic for a sec. I'm just going to get some water. I'll leave the mic on. I need some refreshments. Just mute. Boo boo. And we are back. Sorry, I needed some more water. Hmm. A bit more over than that now. Just get it.
That's better. Um, yeah, now I did see that yesterday. If you look at the PLL uh, code I'm using now, I think I'm using that version. Um, here, look. Uh, and you also see when I run this, look, it says filter range one. It's all in the repository. I just haven't committed it yet. Hold on. This is probably going to be a massive commit. Uh, what do I want? I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. I don't want to do those. Do you want that? Do you want that? What are the unversion files? Need here. Why is all your MD not included? I added that. Huh? MD. Interesting. Uh, I'm just wondering when it builds the output, do we need to see the inclusion of that? Book.js. I guess it will need all of this. Build top. I don't know about that. So the question is, you need that manual CSS, yeah, I need that, fully need that. Oh, bear with me. But we only have to do this once.
Right. Um, Book base magnets. Hmm. Right, that's pushed, Laurie. You should be able to see it. I don't know if we can get that to show on GitHub pages yet because um, uh, hang on. I'd have to work out where does it put the um, where does it put the bloody um, not put files let me just check something Lab source theme book tunnel source theme. Okay. Where, is it Where does it put the build? Seems to be missing the build. There's a book. Mm. Do I have to submit all of that? I think I do. Uh, mm. To do it in here, I know it's to do it in the command line. <coughs> How do I add? Hmm. <coughs> 
Just use um, do it the old fashioned way. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, in the lab. So can I do this kit add book star can I do that recursively? Is there a recursive git add? I'm not sure if I should be adding this in. Did add book? Then I add, have to add the contents. Lab slash slash book. Ah, it's, it's, oh, it's been actively ignored by um, a git, a git ignore. Hold on. Yeah, it ignores anything in book. That's telling me, and I think when I when I set it up, I think it asked me if it wanted to create a git ignore for the book, which I thought was very strange. So it seems to. I think you know what I think. It's the trouble is, book is dynamically generated from the source uh, and I think you can run like a git pages um, or Travis thing that builds it dynamically from the repository hold on let's see what it says in the manual md uh, Continuous integration. Running MD book from in continuous there are a variety of services such as GitHub Actions or GitHub GitLab and there. The following provides some general guidelines on how to configure your service to run MD book specific these can be found on the automatic deployment wiki page. Installing inbook. There are several different strategies for installing MD book, particular method depending on your needs. Precompiled binaries. Perhaps the easiest method is to use precompiled binaries. This is relatively fast. No, no, no. Building from source. Your building from source will require having Rust installed. Deploying. You may want to automatically deploy your book. Some may want to do this every time a change is pushed. Others may want to only deploy. Okay, this part of it's a bit more complicated, folks. Um. 
You will also need to understand the specifics on how to push a change to your web service, for example, GitHub Pages. This requires com committing output on a specific Git branch. Other services may require using something like SSH. Basic outline is that you need to run mdbook build to generate the output and then transfer the files which are in the book directory to the correct location. You then want to consider if you need to invalidate. Right, I don't have much experience of doing this automated uh, continuous integration stuff. Um, I could commit it, uh, take it from the um, here. How do I comment this out? I don't. Uh, let's see, comment. Yeah, it's a hash. So I'm just going to get rid of that, and then I'm going to go back. And I'm going to do commit. I do get our book now should be added in so if I then do get commit oh, come on yeah there's a whole Fifty four files, fuck. That's why they don't want you to do it. I'll just do that temporarily because I'd be interested to see if I can um set up pages. Hello. Added book. By disabling it's it until I can account the continuous integration. Quiet. Okay, so push that. So now if I go to uh, here, if I go to this, what I can do, I think, is if I add, hold on, is it settings? Pages No uh, No, not dots Seems to want to use dots Can I um Maybe I shouldn't be using GitHub Pages for this. Mm. 
that seems to be git page specific mm. Okay, I can't do it that way. Shit. So if we go into lab, if we go into book, we can see it, but we can't see it here, if you see what I mean. Can't view it. Uh, if we go to design index. <laughs> Damn it, no, we can't do it that way. Shit, I was really fucking annoying. How do you view this? Do you have to use GitHub pages, maybe? Damn it, I, I'm not. Um, not use this feature. No. I don't think I can use pages to do this. Option settings, positive no, manage access, security mass, web hooks, branches, notifications, monkeys, branches. If I say pages, it doesn't enable me to choose something other than root or dot. So if I had it in docs, would that work, I wonder? I mean, the, the book's there if you want to have a look at it, Laurie, but it's in raw HTML format. Um, if I want to publish it on here, I'd need to put it in docs. I mean, the only other thing I could do is cheat and do something like... I wonder if this would work.
Right, so if I do um, drops, no, it's not book. And I do ls docs. So if I commit, so git add docs. And then I push. So if I go to commit on here now. And change file. Uh, add is link um, actually, so, um, bollock link to book rules docs for git uh, changes. And if this will work, it's a long shot. Fail to commit. Communication error. Does it not like that? Valid argument. Open docs and valid argument. Ooh, it didn't like that. Unable to index file docs. I'm sure I've used symbolic links before, but maybe not. <clears throat> maybe you can't commit symbolic links. Mm. Particularly when it's a directory. Ouch. That's not committed to me. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Laurie's saying he can uh, view it locally by cloning the repository. Um, I'm sure you could, you should be able to get it working with. Um, GitHub pages. Maybe there's some magic spell, or maybe the way to do it is not is not like that. Not with the hard commit of the book, but with some continuous integration. Oh, excuse me, I'm yawning. Continuous integration script, which converts it into a format of GitHub pages nights. Okay. Oh, let me get rid of this. Let's roll that back. I should check.
Yeah, I've rolled it back so I don't have that. Um, we just leave it as it is for now. I need to look into that a bit more. I think with the continuous integration, excuse me, I'm really yawning now. Um, with the continuous integration, it should build that after source submissions anyhow. I shouldn't really need to upload all of the um, book contents. It should be able to build that dynamically. I just need to look into that. I think I'm going to leave that there. Um, we're nearly at 10 o'clock. So I'm probably going to call it an evening and then the stream in a minute. Any questions on what I've done so far? Um, or any questions on the Ice Logic deck, on any of the tiles, um, any of the lab notes stuff? Any of the uh, AHDL that we've done? Navigation isn't very good at the moment. What's up with the files locally? Seems to work fine on the, um, on the book. If I do that and that, oh, it's because I've stopped running it. What it normally does is it runs, I normally run a, um, Normally runs a server here, a local server. When I do the, because uh, what I do is I run this. Hold on. Show you that. So it's running a local server, and then um, when I connect to it, I can navigate. And it seems to work fine. Does yours not navigate like that? Oh, you're just saying that the uh, introduction didn't do Yeah, no, I mean, the early parts haven't. I've still got to write up some of the stuff that we've already done, remember? So I, I only just started this now on the AV. Yeah, the introduction doesn't have anything, apart from a typo. Do you not get the navigation on the left hand side? No. Oh, anyhow. Anywho. Dimey. I don't know what to do about the audio connector. I'm going to have to look at the um, CAD. But I think physically I may be a bit stuffed. Because I don't think there's enough room. In fact, I'm pretty certain it wouldn't be there. I'm going to disconnect this now. I'm going to lift it up and see if I can show you. But if you look, can you see at the audio, see where the connector and the jack are, and look where the um, posts are. There is about zero room. I can't even get this to focus either. Focus. Focus, focus. And see how close those connectors are. Mm. 
Hmm, doesn't seem to want to connect. There we go. Can you see how close the audio is to the connector? And then you've got the posts either side. So there's very little actual room for manoeuvre. It is a problem, to be sure. Not have an easy solution, I don't think. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Oh, oh, oh. It may be difficult to solve. Not easy to solve that one. Anyhow, I'll have to have a think. Right, I'm going to wrap it up then. That will do me. That's two days streaming in a row. That's quite enough. Um, I'll stream again next week. But uh, I will be down on Discord, obviously, um, working on this stuff. So, uh, you know, the conversation may continue there. But for the meantime, thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you for your help. Um, and ciao until next time. See ya.